I want you to open your Bibles to two places of Scripture. The first Scripture I want to give you is the word out of the Word of Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1 and verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 12. It says this, Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. He said, you have seen well, I am watching over my word to perform it. This word perform is a powerful, powerful word. There's a word in Philippians chapter 1 and verse uh, 6. And it says in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6 that the thing that God has started in you, He will be faithful to perform. Everybody say perform. He will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. I want to encourage this house, our church, our family here, and also Neil and Nancy, that God is performing His work. You are watching the performance. You are watching God take center stage of your life, and actually His Word is performing His heart. Isn't that amazing? God says, I'm not going to just speak a thing, but the thing that I speak into your life, it carries my life. For the words of God, they are spirit and they are life. Can you say amen? We cannot take for granted the words that God gives us, the prophetic words that God speaks into our life, the rhema that we get out of reading the Logos Word when it leaps off the pages, even the words that God gives us over our nation. God wants us to understand that He is performing that Word in us. If we take that Word perform uh, and we again look at it through the lenses of religion, it gives us a picture in that view that we can just kind of sit back and watch God do it. But that's not what that means at all. I want to show you exactly what that word means. And I think it's very important that we understand this whenever we begin to ask God to do things and to finish things in our life. I want you to turn to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. Romans chapter 8 and verse 26, it says, In the same way, the Spirit also helps. Everybody shout, helps. Shout it loud, helps. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. For we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And He who he who searches the heart knows. I love that word, knows. He knows what the mind of the Spirit is because He intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. I want to talk about the word will of God, that phrase for just a minute. When we talk about the will of God, we're talking about what is in God's heart and what is God's intent for you. Isn't that amazing? You have your plans, but God orders your steps. Isn't that amazing? I love that. Which means that God gives us wax every now and then to pull us right back in order. And sometimes He does it with His words, sometimes He does it with His hand, and sometimes He does it with His eyes. There were times growing up, my dad would use his hand. He didn't have to use his hand too much because I knew His words. And he didn't really have to use His words a whole lot because I knew his look. He could look at me in a certain way and the fear of God would come over me and my world would change. Any of you like that with your parents when they, they could just look at you or my dad could just point at me and I knew I had the gift of interpretation. I knew exactly what he was talking about and what I needed to do. Amen? We need to get our children back in that vein again. Amen? This thing about not correcting and not spanking your kids is absolutely demonic and of the devil. Did you hear what the Word said today? It's demonic and it's of the devil. If you're not spanking your kids and correcting your kids and bringing your kids into alignment, then you are setting them up for failure. And you're setting them up for destruction. God put a little extra padding on the backside for correction. Amen. 
It says in Proverbs, if you spare the rod, you spoil the child. My daddy never was able to negotiate me into anything. It took a little bit of this before I understood the terms of negotiation. Praise the Lord. He helps us. He moves us into ways that Holy Spirit can actually pray through us and bring us into the performance of God's Word. God's spoken many things over this church. God has spoken many things into your life, and many of you are waiting on this, those things to happen. I know that Neil and Nancy have prophetic words over their life. I spoke some of them before I even knew them that have not fully come to pass yet, and God wants to perform them. God wants to do them, even in your own life. Even some of you in your business, in your family, in your marriage, some of you who are called to government or called to education, whatever it may be, there are words that God's given you that have not come to pass. Why have they not come to pass? I believe two things are in order. And I won't talk on the first one much, but the second one I want to dig into. The, the first one is that we not only need prophetic word, but we need apostolic declaration released in our life as well. We don't just need to hear the Word, but we need the apostolic gift in our life to awaken and activate the Word and set it in motion. That's one of the graces of the apostolic ministry. The second piece of it is God wants to partner with you. Now, whenever we look at this Word in, in Romans chapter 8 and verse 26, it says, in the same way, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. Now, the word weakness here does not just mean weak in strength, but it literally means unable to see or to perform. So when you're unable to perform, God helps you and helps His Word perform in your life. I want to encourage you to go back home, find the recordings and the things you've written out of the prophetic words God's given you, and keep them very handy. Pray into them, speak over them, read into them. The word help here is a powerful word if we can begin to understand this word. Now, the word help in the Greek is a long word. It's actually three words. I'm going to do my best to pronounce it. Maybe it'll bless you. Hallelujah. But it is the word son, anti, lambino. That's it. My wife helped me. We'll get, well, shakabundi. That's as close as I can get to it. That's a Neil word, hallelujah. But this word is three, actually three Greek words that are put together. Now this word, we're going to break them down, and I want us to look at this word help again. The first part of it is the word son, S-U-N. Now the word son here, it means together with, to take hold with on the side, <clears throat> or alongside. So the first part of this Greek word help, it literally means that God is coming alongside of you to take hold of what you've been praying for that you didn't know how to pray for. He's going to take hold with you along your side. John chapter 16, it says that when the Spirit of truth comes, He will do three things. He'll convict the world of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. When it says the Spirit of truth or the Comforter, the word Comforter there for Holy Spirit is literally the one who is called to your side to plead your cause. It's a legal term. It's a legal term. It means the one who is called to your side to plead your cause. People who have a small even amount of intelligence would not dare go to court and represent themselves. Right? Some of you think you can do a good job doing that, but you would not do a good job. The pressure, the anxiety of it, the not understanding all the rule of law and all the things that go with that will get you sidetracked and you will lose. You need somebody schooled in law to stand there with you at that defendant's table and to be able to plead your cause. Not the defender's cause, your cause. And this word son, it literally means that Jesus is coming beside us together and taking hold of a thing with us. So He helps us by coming along, partnering, and taking a hold. 
The second word in the Greek that makes this enormous word we just tried to pronounce is the word anti. It means the same thing in English as it does in the Greek. It means this, over, against, or opposite. So whenever God comes along beside you and takes hold of a thing, this is a legal word as well. The word help is a legal word. In this text, it is violent. He takes hold with you in opposition to your enemy. So He's not standing against you. He's standing with you against your enemy. Does that make sense? So when the Spirit helps us to pray, it's not just us speaking in tongues or groaning. Many of us have groaned over stuff, right? We need the groanings that cannot be uttered by man, not the groaning out of pain and agony. Praise the Lord. So He comes along and He opposes the enemy with you. Why? Because if God's going to do anything in the earth, He needs a man or a woman to partner with to get it done. In your life, the prophetic words, the decrees that have been over you, will not automatically happen. My friends, you must partner with God to bring those things into the natural, out of the supernatural. Does that make sense today? So when you're, when you're living life, you're not happenstance, you're not just going through life hoping for the best, or God, would you bless me? God said, I've already blessed you. Let's stand together and take hold of this thing against your opponent. If you don't do it that way, it will not happen. Now, the third part of this word is the word lambano. Lambano. That's the best I can do. It looks like lambano. It has to be lambano. It literally means this, to take, to receive. Now, did she do it? Yes, she did it right. Pray, thank you, Jess. I, I thought when I sent it to her to put up there, she thought might have thought that I just duplicated a word. But she put it up there twice, right? Cult, cult. Everybody say cult, cult. Very intentional. Why? Because when you see in the Scripture something that is double enunciated, and this word help in its original context can be a double enunciation. So have you ever read through the Scripture, truly, truly, verily, verily, Jesus said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you, grace, grace. Have you heard, you, you read that in the Scripture? That gives us, when those things happen, when double enunciation happens, it draws a prophetic picture for us. Can I give it to you real quick? It's, it's you standing in a fight, in a place that you're believing something for. And Jesus walks up behind you. Come here, Joanne. She's a pretty example, isn't she? How do you like that new dress she's wearing? Isn't that nice? Woo! Glory to God. Stand right here, baby. So Joanne is in a fight, not with me, but the devil. Hallelujah. And Jesus sees her in that, and He walks up and literally moves her out of the way, and He steps in her spot, and He fights the fight, and He wins the battle, he steps back and he brings her back into this spot and he says, good job, you won a good fight. Come on, give Jesus a hand clap. That's what double enunciation is in the Scripture. Jesus removing you, stepping in, winning the battle, putting you back in and said, you did a good job. And that makes a redneck in me just want to run. Glory to God. Hear the word today. You're in some stuff. You've got to partner with God. And God is saying, let me grace, grace you. Let me cult, cult you. It's not you catching the enemy and catching what needs to come into your life. It's Jesus catching it by His Spirit and adding it to you and saying, good catch. Selah. Holy Spirit, let that sink into us deep today. It means caught, caught. It means collected. It means obtained. It means occupy. And it means to seize. This word lambano, it means Jesus is stepping in and He's seizing things that the enemy has held that belongs to you. He's seizing. It's a legal term. 
See, you cannot see something legally unless you have a writ of assistance or a document from a court that says you can legally go in and take something that someone has, else has owned legally or illegally. See, some of the things in your life, even your future, some of your prophetic words, the things that God's been speaking to you over the years have not been happening because the enemy has laid siege against you. Some of the things you knew God told you to do and you did them with all of your might, all of your heart, all of your soul. You worked and you did it and you did it and you knew God told you to do it and it didn't happen and maybe hope deferred came. Maybe you were disappointed. Maybe things happened and you got discouraged. Let me tell you, the enemy came to siege those things and we need the help of Holy Spirit to bring that thing back into our life. Does that make sense today? So we have to partner with God. You cannot just complain. To God, don't do that at all. You cannot murmur about it. You cannot fuss about it. You've you got to be careful what you say. Don't curse your future. Watch your lips. My mother had a good remedy for things that came out of my mouth, Greg, that were not of God. I remember, y'all didn't, Australia never had the A&P grocery stores, did they? No, we had them. I remember it's, it's, it's tattooed in my brain. They became IGA. Got them, and then they became in the States, they became Piggly Wiggly. But I remember, I, uh, I remember checkout number three. I remember the number, checkout number three. And we were standing in line, and my mother was getting ready to pay for, the, for her groceries. I reached and I got some bubble gum, and I put it up on there like I was going to get it. My mother said, no, put it back. And I went, The last thing I remember <laughs> before getting up off the floor, she made contact, brother, right? She said, if you cut up in public, I'm going to punish you in public. That cured me. I just remember my lips were really swollen. They were throbbing and like pins and needles in them from the contact of my mother's knuckles. Yeah, you may say, oh, that's a bad mother. No, it did me a lot of good. I never stuck my tongue out at my mother again. It cured me. The medicine was good. You got to watch what's coming out of your mouth. You cannot curse things, even if you don't understand them. If you don't understand it, don't say nothing until you have understanding because the Bible says that you will have what comes out of here. Smile at me on Sunday morning. Yeah, be careful what you curse. What you're cursing today may be your Savior tomorrow. Joseph's brothers cursed him and they threw him in a pit, sold him into slavery, but it wasn't a few many years later that Joseph was the salvation to them. Be careful what you curse. Be careful what you say. This word is so powerful. Here's what it means in its entirety. Together we will stand opposite the enemy and, and seize that which the enemy has held. Did you get that? That's the entirety of the word help. Now that brings that little word help into a greater, deeper meaning for us, right? Help is a weak word. <laughs> when we look at it like this, He said the Spirit, the same way the Spirit, Holy Spirit, He also helps. He comes together along our side to stand opposite of the enemy and legally obtain and seize that which the enemy has held when we are weak. Mm. For we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit Himself knows how to intercede to be that paraclete, not parakeet, but paraclete, that is called along your side to plead your cause. Amen. Do you hear that? God is wanting to power up your life. He's wanting to amp up your life. He's wanting to increase the flow of blessing and advance His Spirit purpose in your life. But He will not do that because He honors His Word above His name unless you partner with Him. Oh, hear the Word of the Lord today. It changes today. Your help does not mean that you're without help. It means Jesus is coming along your side 
to take hold of something with you. That means your hand is on it and His hand is on it and you're seizing it together. Opposite of the enemy. Help. Everybody shout help. See, when you ask God to help, you're actually asking Him, stand beside me and let's put our hands on this together. Amen? So when you ask Him for help next time, don't think you're just going to lay down take a nap or a volume and wake up in the morning and everything's going to be okay. No. Don't take volume anyway. I've heard it before. What it means is you've had enough and you're ready to put your hand and His hand on it together. And to stand opposite. See, the Bible says, after you've done all to stand, stand therefore. That means when you've taken a place in the, in the Spirit, stand there, don't move. Stay the ground, stay the course until you see it manifested in the natural. And when you see it manifested in the natural, you're putting a stake in the ground and you're declaring, now this land belongs to me. This Word is for you today. It's for Neil and Nancy today. And he says this, your God is not done with you. There's more to get. There are prophetic words unfulfilled. And God's going to bring them into your hand, but only if you ask for help. Whew. Help from who? Not me. <laughs> Not your neighbor. But Him. His Spirit. See, if we're going to be a Spirit-led people... We've got to be a people that is submitted to Holy Spirit. Surrendered to Holy Spirit. The Bible says that those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the what? Sons of God. Isn't that amazing? You're sons and daughters of the Most High God. You're not renting space in heaven. You're not renting space in life. You own it. Whoa, glory. Amen. And God's shifting you into a place of partnership this morning. I really believe you're going to see more in this decade than you've ever seen before. Part of prayer is not only asking, yes, ask, but it says in verse, 20, verse 26 there that you pray according to His will. Let me just say this to you right now. God is not obligated to answer any prayer that you pray that is outside His will for your life. He's not obligated. Did you catch that? God is not obligated to answer any prayer that you pray that is outside His will for your life. So that tells me if we won't answer prayers, we must begin to discover what is the will of God for our life. And whenever we discover what the will of God is for our life, we can then begin to pray towards that way. We don't pray asking for things that we consume upon our own lust, like it says in James. But when we literally find our head in His head, when we're thinking what God thinks and we know what God knows about us, we can begin to pray what God has been dreaming about us. And when we pray it, we decree it, we release it, it begins to happen in our life. Why? It's according to His will. Whew. My prayer this morning is that God's shifting our thinking concerning our relationship with Holy Spirit and help. Father, we bless You today. And Father, we thank You today, God, for the help. The help that Holy Spirit brings in our life to complete our assignment. To complete that thing, dear God, that is according to Your will. <laughs> your purpose, the intent of your heart concerning our life. Help us discover that, Father. Come on, right where you're sitting, just lift your hands for a moment. Father, I thank You for the release, the release from our life of all of the things that are contrary to Your will. We release that. Just say that to the Lord this morning. We release it to You, Lord. And Father, we receive into your life. Say, I receive it, Lord. 
We receive into our life today, Father, your will. Your will that is good, your will that is perfect, your will that is acceptable. That particular will is what we're talking about today. And Father, today, just give your church a fresh baptism of your Holy Spirit today. Come on, just receive that right now. This is the altar call today. It's coming in your seat right where you are today. Father, I just release that, that fresh filling of Holy Spirit, that fresh seeing we see through kingdom lenses today. Not through lenses of religion any longer, but kingdom lenses today, Father. I release that into the lives of Your people today. Oh, we bless You. Father, we bless You. We bless You. We bless You. <clears throat> I want us to do this this morning. David, could I get you to help me bring two chairs up here? Pastor David, if you'd come. Pastor Joe, if you'd come. Some of those others that we had asked to come. Tom, you guys come. Thank you, Lord. Neil and Nancy, I want y'all to come sit up here if you would. They've been married 60 years. We wouldn't want them to stand too long. These are seats of honor today. Thank you, Lord. Seats of honor. Mm. He's hungry. Thank you, Lord. We want to pray over them and we want to just bless them. I'd ask a couple people to say about a minute. We're going to cut it to 30 seconds. A little memory testimony to you guys today to bless you today. Joe, come on up first. Thank you, Neil. And Nancy. I'm so glad that we came to this church and we met you. For when my wife and I came, we were almost bankrupt spiritually. But when we came with your love and your understanding, we have been lifted up and we are so glad. God has used you and my wife in order to be able to be revived within the spirit. And we are very happy for that. Like us, many other people have been blessed by your ministry. My wife always thought very highly on Nancy. She always thought what Nancy was teaching her or telling her that it was very, very important. Now it's not important anymore. It's in the heavenly places. But Neil, I'm still here. I'm still here. And, and what you said, 60 years or 50 something, that's much before my time, right? Eh? You, must, you must be getting old. But nevertheless, I love you with the love of the Lord, with the fullness of my heart. God bless you. Uh, we go back a long way, mate. Long way. You know, this fella, he turned up at the gatehouse at the Nambour School. He was a Sunday school superintendent. And then he came down to the coast to stir up a storm. And did he stir up a storm? I tell you what, those days, they were amazing in the, in the early moves of the charismatic movement. We had a great time at the gatehouse, lumbering keyboards, iron frame pianos, up onto the stage. We'd have David there dancing around like a... Oh, oh no, I won't say that. <laughs> but there were days of enjoyment. There were days of charismatic renewal. There were days of fun. And... Oh, okay. Anyway, when we moved from the gatehouse and... We saw this old pineapple farm down at Wombai there. <laughs> and we had the greatest amazing revival you would ever imagine in an old pineapple shed. And we used to spend days there, the weekends there, cleaning it out, getting rid of all the rubbish from the pineapples and everything else that was lying around the place, including the rodents. But we had such a great sense of unity and purpose. 
and the moving of God was that intense that it would literally fill that place with his glory, didn't it? And we had, we had a teacher there that came along, a fellow called Taylor, and he used to get all these surfy, he'd go down the beach and he'd rope in all the surfy girls and he'd bring them up to church and they'd all get out in the front and there'd be tambourines and dancing and you'd have about 50-odd about people out the front dancing and praising the Lord and oh, it was a time of rejoicing and charismatic renewal. And... Uh, Hmm? Oh, the school. Oh. You've never built a school before? Neither had we. <laughs> but you get there Saturday mornings making desks because we started a thing called Accelerated Christian Education where they came to school and all the work was done at home in books and everything. And it was an amazing time. Jody knows all about it. <laughs> My daughter knows all about it and probably a lot of other children grew up as a result of that school. But there were days of, of really enjoying and an outpouring of the Spirit of God. And really the times we had there are not going to compare with the times that are going to come. It's, it's going to come in such a measure that God is going to pour out his Spirit in such a way that those times will be just like chicken feed, just like a like an, an early pouring out of his spirit, and that's going to happen again, thanks to you. Thanks to you, Nance. Thanks to both of you. Amen. Amen. Oh, dear Nance. <laughs> There's many of you here that were back with me back in those days when we first met up with Neil and Nance. And I was just thinking back, it's, it's 40 years, and we were all in our 30s. Yeah. <laughs> and we were all so young and enthusiastic and, and so excited. As Ken was saying, so many exciting things happened during those early days. Um, we even used to have the, um, the fellows in the, re the orange robes come in sometimes, didn't they? Remember coming to church? The, um, yeah, the, the, what do they call them? The Hare Krishnas. Yeah, <laughs> they came to church. <laughs> I remember, yeah. Yeah, that's right, they did. But no, they were very exciting days and the words that come to me are excitement and joy and we had fun too, didn't we? We had, we had such fun back there in the um, pineapple shed. And I remember the, the night that um, my, my family and myself, we all got water baptised and they pulled in a big old corrugated iron tank into the, into the pineapple shed and it was filled with this dirty water and I don't know whether it came from the creek. Did it come from the creek? <laughs> but it was, it was brown <laughs> and we were all water baptised, Neil and Nance water baptised us in this old dirty tank of, of brown water. <laughs> I, I think we had to go home and wash all the grit out of our hair. <laughs> had wonderful times <laughs> and our times the early days up at Tachikoi were wonderful too um, yeah church was just great but it still is as Neil was saying yeah. amen praise God Pastor Dave <laughs> stress not you know all I want to say is I might have could say a lot but together you've been a real demonstration of walking together and serving God with all your hearts and how God has complimented each other in the ministry gift. Neil, wherever you got up, conferences, whatever, you had a great time of worship, then you'd get up and the worship would rise again, the presence of God would fall. Man's restoration of lives, you've carried it in your life and there'd be thousands that could testify of the wonderful gift which reached out and ministered him. So I love you both. I could say a lot more, but that'll do. <laughs> I'll, I'll be short. Um, you probably heard me say this before, but personally, I'm answering my first pastors and my first encounter at church. So when I was 15, so um, here I am today still 
Elise, yeah, good on you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so Neil was my first experience at church, and you know, and he's he's been in my life for probably 40 years now, and he's always been an encouragement to my life and my wife's life. And I remember all the kids and everybody used to call him Uncle Neil and Auntie Nancy. You've got so many people that still call you Uncle Neil and Auntie Nancy, and you know, it's such a generation that just love you so much. And yeah, and I and our whole family, we love you very much. And you're still my, still my um, spiritual mum and dad, and you're still my, my dad and mum. Amen. Amen. Let's gather around them. Tom, say a word. Let's gather around them. Thank you, Father, for this beautiful couple. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your grace and your power and your presence. Thank you for your maturity and your wisdom. Thank you for your anointing. For the Lord would say that I have put the dreams in your heart. The dreams that your dreams are of me, says the Lord. The dreams that you have of people running to the altar, people running to find me, says the Lord. I have put them in your heart. The Lord says you will see them. You will see them here and you will see them there. You'll see them in the travels that have come. Do not fear the travel, says the Lord, for it is time to travel again. It is time to carry the bags. It is time to sit through the airports and the waiting and all the, the travel that comes. But when you get there, you shall carry my mantle. You shall carry my message. You shall carry my voice and the people shall come. The anointed to gather will be upon you again, says the Lord, and people will gather from the near and from the far. They shall come and they shall come and they shall hear my word of truth. My anointing shall touch them and cut them to the heart and they shall come running to me, says the Lord. I have put these dreams in your heart, says the Lord. And the prayer that you have prayed and you have sought me for the church to rise up, that is also of me, says the Lord. And the church shall rise as you speak the word of authority and you speak the word of truth. The church shall arise and you'll begin to see the church take form. You'll begin to see my body take shape, says the Lord. As people rise up with the authority that I've given you to impart, says the Lord. These dreams are of me. They are of not of you, but they are of me. I have put them into you. I have imparted them into you. And you shall carry them to the nations again, says the Lord. And it shall be come to pass because it is of me. And these are the days that I have promised you. These are the days when it shall be easy. It will not be difficult. It will not be hard. But I'll put my grace upon you and it shall be easy. And there'll be much joy and much liberty. And all those around you shall find it, says the Lord. And we thank you and honour you for it. Thank you, my God. Amen. These guys have spoke of the past and a lot of great memories. I want to speak about the future. We're going to see this nation shift together. We're going to see revival together. We're going to run together. You've got a lot of good years left in both of you. And we're going to see God do some great things. We believe this so much that we got rid of what we had to get rid of, put what we had to put in the bag, and we came to get shoulder to shoulder, arm to arm with you to see Australia changed starting right here from the Sunshine Coast in Kiwana. So the future's good. It's got Jesus in it. And it's got all of us in it together. And I'm thankful for what God is doing and what He's done to bring us together. And I'm excited about what we're going to see God do together. Amen? Can we just give the Lord a big praise? God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to ask Neil if he would just to pray over us as we begin to fellowship together. Come give them hugs. Talk to them. Don't, don't hoard them. Amen. Let everybody be able to hug them and talk to them as well. But let's stand to our feet as we're ready to be dismissed in prayer. Father, we just want to come today and uh, just honor you and acknowledge you. Acknowledge your hand and your still small voice and everything that you're doing right now. And Though our natural mind can't comprehend it, but we know that somehow or other, you've done something so dynamic and powerful in our lives. And you're about to breathe on that. And that which you're about to breathe on will explode into your power, into your dynamics. And Lord, that we will be that voice in this nation. Father, I pray for each and every person here today. And I thank you, Lord, for, Lord, just for, their love towards Nance and I and, and I pray my God that they can sense the love that we have for them and Lord together we can do it together we'll, we're going to see something so dynamic and powerful and Lord we want to give you all the praise we want to give you all the glory come on lift up your hands right now and just give God praise give him praise give him praise right now praise the Lord praise his name 
We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.